EV drivers are turning up here and having a nightmare. When we first arrived, this one has got no lights on, but someone actually managed to get it working through the app. That one had a light on, couldn't get it working at all. And there was some poor driver there who'd been waiting half an hour to try and get a charge, just to get a few miles in to try and get home. This is not acceptable. I'm Dave and I'm taking on Apple Green. Over a month ago, we came here. We found this one in a dangerous state. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, we'll leave a link to that down below. Well worth watching. But we found the end had broken off this and the contacts were visible. Not good on a high power charger. As we always do if we find a problem, it was reported straight into them. And we're back here today to find out what's going on. So let's have a look and, uh, oh, wow, yes. Well, that's... That's good news because when we were here last, over a month ago, we met someone who had reported it a month before we got here. So there's some action at last, but, oh, hang on a minute. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. They've put a cap on the end to protect the contacts. The screen doesn't work, the contactless payment method, you can't read the screen, no lights on it. Whew, 79p, they got that bit working. And when we come over here, what do we find? Well, it's even worse. This one's, well, that's all right, but screen's not working. This has got a green light as well. Green light, it's not. And screen not working. And this one, the contactless has gone. Big crack in it. So, it sometimes works out that we meet people uh, who can help us in our quest. And on this particular occasion, we met a customer services uh, manager and she was here just a few minutes ago, Sarah her name is, and she was telling us the story, the trouble she's had trying to get these going with Apple Green. It's not for want of trying. She's been a real Trojan in this and she emails them, calls them because they want them working because they get complaints in there if they're not and she's on them all the time. And it was only yesterday, I believe, she said, that they came out and fixed that bit of them. But she asked about the screens and they said, not our department. <laughs> what a story. Uh, but they did say, if you uh, want to, you can use these with the app, bypass the screen, bypass the contactless and use them through the app. Now, Go back about six months and we got another video. We'll see if we can leave that video, a link to that video down below, was when we were at Charnock Richard up on the M6 and Apple Green there, and I decided to download the Apple Green app. Now, when you can normally download an app, it asks you for minimal detail. So it'll be name, telephone number, maybe your registration. Do you want to put in a, a contactless payment detail? No, that's fine. Bang, here's your app. When I tried it with Apple Green, Oh, it really annoyed me because they wanted everything. Uh, it was name, address, telephone number, uh, how long you've been there, uh, what car have you got, what's the registration, what's its value, where do you work? Oh, it was an absolute nightmare. And that was just to allow me to have the app and then, had I done all that, it would have asked me to store the detail. Well, there's only one reason I can think of why uh, Apple Green wants any of that information, and it's simply because they're going to sell it to somebody, and I refuse to have that app. I refuse to give them voluntarily that data. So for me, if I was uh, coming here to charge with Apple Green, I refuse to have that app. These would be out of service for me, and that would mean that Apple Green here doesn't have working, working chargers here. The only other option, there's uh, six of the uh, Tesla superchargers. These are exclusive Tesla, uh, so nobody else can use them other than Teslas. And we've got three here at the moment. Uh, but just over there, you'll see it in the background. Not quite. Uh, there's a grid serve. It's a 50 kilowatt dual bay shared power. Uh, and that is about all you've got here. So if you're heading uh, eastbound on the M62, which is where we are, Hothead more. Um, then what you'll find is Tesla are quite well supplied, the six here, and there's a load over the other side. Uh, but if you're a non-Tesla, uh, you've got two broken Apple Greens and one, one charger with two bays, 50 kilowatt shared power. This is getting to the point, it's ridiculous. And also being reported in, 
there's no cable on this side. Uh, Sarah thought it might be someone trying to stretch this one over to there because that's got the green. We don't know that bit of it, but every time she's reporting it in, yeah, there's someone going to come out and do something. And then finally, just the other day, someone came out and actually cleared up that plug. So it's no longer dangerous but it's no longer working properly either. So without the app, these two are totally useless. How long is it gonna be? Because we now, it's gonna be coming up to three or four months since this was first reported in as dangerous. And yet all they've done is just put a cap on the end, which surely doesn't take an awful lot of effort from a highly skilled engineer. So this is just dragging on and on and on. And you'd think at some point, the lack of revenue from this charger would ring some alarm bells somewhere. But just casually in passing, Sarah mentioned that this side of the motorway is power constrained. They do not have the power that they need. But even if they did, do you actually think they would do anything about it? I have my doubts anyhow. Uh, but for contrast, you see, the other side, when we get over there, we've filmed there many occasions, and it's a different story altogether. They have plenty of charges over there. They all seem to be working. They also be, seem to be maintained. Good number, etc. This side, they've got two. Well, if they've got enough power for these two, surely these two should be working. It's not a, an engineer's nightmare to come across two chargers. Uh, can't be too difficult to keep them going, but for them it is. But you've got two chargers here, both them dual bay, but Ch Chadamo and CCS2. So you've only got two CS2 or two Chadamos, not four, four bays, two bays. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your grid server over there, the 50 kilowatts shared, uh, 50 kilowatts between two cars, two bays. So for motorists heading east on the M62, heading to, uh, head just coming up towards Leeds, uh, this is a nightmare. And of course, you don't know it until you get here. Uh, you'll see on the app that it's got, it's got Teslas, it's got uh, Apple Green, it's got GridServe here. Um, it's not until you get here, you suddenly find out most of them don't work. And that's not good enough in this day and age. The government has been trying to get the motorways updated. So wherever you go, you're going to get good service from a good, a good number of chargers. Problem here, these are Tesla onlys. Uh, now, Tesla drivers don't see that as a problem. In fact, they love it because they never get crowded. But if you're a non-Tesla driver, you are literally down to uh, four bays, two on the grid serve, two here. And these two, unless you've got the app, you're not going to get them working. So it's a totally unacceptable situation here. And give Sarah a due. She's been trying. She's emailing them, calling them, comes out and meets them if they turn up. Uh, things just aren't moving. That's a bit like trying to keep your classic car on the road. Yes, you can keep them going virtually forever. These are way past their sell-by date already. These should have been on the scrap heap a long time ago. These haven't been fitted for years. And so coming out every time is costing them money. So at some time, it would make sense these should be swapped for new ones. Sarah says, no chance. <laughs> what can you do? Now we've got a certain amount of confusion here because there's an array of six chargers that are run by Tesla and there's Tesla cars charging happily. So what's going on? While we've been here, two people have tried to charge. The last one was a, a VW ID3. Uh, didn't get anywhere. Very briefly, Tesla's got thousands of chargers. Uh, less than half of them are exclusive to Tesla. You cannot use them in any other car. Only Teslas will work there. Doesn't matter what you do, what apps you've got or anything, you can't use them. The other half, you can. Some of them you might need an app, most of them you don't nowadays, but those are specifically open to all. And it says very, very clearly in loads of places that it's open to all. The best place is either on the Tesla website or on the Tesla app, they'll tell you clearly. So we've got six perfectly good working chargers here. Oh, just a little message for Tesla here. If you want to get rid of these permanently, just open these up to all because with the prices you're charging, typically about 35p per kilowatt hour, crazy prices, they're gonna rip these out in no time as just a total waste of time. Anyway, leave that up to Tesla, but hint, hint, I thought of that first. Um, so we have here, uh, very restricted. If you've got a Tesla, you're absolutely fine. These are in regular use. They're quite powerful pot units. Uh, they're the old V2s, 150 kilowatts, but they're absolutely fine. The uh, Apple Greens, waste of time, not working. 
And the grid serve over there, it's the only other one. It's a dual bay charger, 50 kilowatt shared power. So if there's two of you on that one, 25 kilowatts each, you may as well be plugged in at home. Now I realise that if you're new to EVs, or if you just think you're getting your first one, this must sound absolutely horrendous. But we can assure you it isn't. We travel the country. This is what we do day in and day out. And we have playlists of locations where everything's going smoothly, where you'll get 20, 30, 40 or 50 chargers, different networks, all of them working perfectly. These thankfully are the exception. And just one thing to bear in mind is that even if they repair or replace those, what we saw just a minute ago was a car came up here, non-Tesla, tried to charge here, couldn't. And we talked to him and he said, well, if I can't charge here, I'm going elsewhere and disappeared. In fact, even if they get these up and working properly, there are motorists who just won't use them. These are at the very top end of expensive and they're not one that you should be aiming for. There's plenty of other choice, even if you don't go Tesla. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, it's a nice sunny day, so we're going to make a move. We've got more videos to film, so thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, click the like button. If you'd like to see more, click the subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can notify you when we launch the videos. I'm Dave.